here's what I've got written down first, okay? When does Scott Frost get fired? That's my first question. I think that's the only well, I have, I that's have the an, only thing I to have happen an answer, now. Like <laughs> I have an answer that I don't think most people agree with. I, I don't think there's any way on earth that happens during the season and there's the world in which they they ride another one out. It's entirely possible. I think that they see right now that they are going to have a ton of losses on this schedule. At that Oklahoma game in a few weeks is going to be a disaster. Absolutely. My under disaster. my under bet about the third quarter of that game, they were they were starting to make a little bit of a comeback by the end of the third quarter. And I thought even if they win this game, I had them winning this game and I still had them missing the under by a game and a half. It, this team is not getting to eight wins. I I, I have no uh, they're, idea. They're not getting to six wins. I don't believe. No, I, no, no. They're, they're not going. No, they're not going bowling. Uh, I I really do think, and I haven't seen anybody else play football. Okay, so I'm making a massive amount of assumptions off of one team without seeing the others. I think Maryland's better than this team. I think they might be in consideration for DFL of of it's, of of the Big Ten. It's entirely possible because they so the wide receivers. Adrian Martinez was was fine, but he still had those crippling mistakes throughout the game that ended up swinging the game in Illinois' favor. Yep. And, and we will talk about Beeland all that here in just a little bit. But the the EPA and everything else, like Adrian Martinez was the only playmaker for Nebraska. Everybody was saying that this is the best collection of wide receivers and skill players that they've had there. Brett Bielema is either a damn wizard like, or what. They couldn't get open. I don't know who these DBs are that he had transferred come in. No, they couldn't it, get separation. They had to run. They couldn't rub get separation routes. at all. At all. Like, <laughs> they had a tight they had one tight end that was big as shit that got wide open and he overthrew him four times. But the one guy I don't know how you overthrow because he's the biggest son bitch on the field. And and he 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 he's the only guy I ever saw get wide open. And most of those, you're exactly right, were on rub routes that just didn't get called. Yes, and so on top of that, there were several opportunities, especially in the first half, where they just left points on the board. They yes. they missed field goals. The wide open receivers early in that game that Martinez just just missed, missed. could just not missed. hit him. And four years into this guy, I feel like he should be better than what he is. And that's all that we heard was we got the like the other guys transferred out because they all knew Martinez is improving and blah 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 like. I didn't see it. I still don't no. see it. And they don't no, have, not like, they have no speed. They have no, I, I cannot figure out what to do with this team. And honestly, they probably still should have won the game. So should have won the game. I, I, I completely agree. The ta- There's no arguing. The talent on Nebraska's side is far superior than the talent on Illinois' side. Nobody can debate this. Well, uh, all right, so. so Is Brett will- Bielema that much better of a coach than, than Scott Frost? I think so. Well, there's a world, right? It's true. And yeah. You know how much I love Brett. You know how much I love Brett. All right. So this has been the this has been the question that we've kicked around a little bit. Okay. If you're Brett, and Nebraska says, uh, "Hey, we're going to go a different route." I know you've been in Illinois for five minutes, but you're obviously better than what we have. Do you want to come make more money and coach for us? Would you take that job if you're Brett? So I don't think that Nebraska would be willing to pay. Scott a whole Frost lot and what it, and what it yeah. takes to, to to buy bread out and I, and I think that it's a little bit embarrassing for Nebraska to hire a, a guy that Illinois was at Wisconsin and, and Illinois right like yeah. I, I think that's what that is so I but do I but just from Brett's perspective is Illinois a better job than Nebraska right now yeah I think so okay. I think you can so, make so you, they don't have the fans they they don't have the Nil support that Nebraska is gonna have Okay, they don't have the fan base that Nebraska's got. Not so two big things that are going to measure recruiting. Illinois doesn't have. I still think I would rather be at a place that's not as toxic because it seems like some shit is going on in that athletic department to where we're just going to play friends and family merry go round. Every everybody that we've talked to that we know seems to think that they're just going to hire another Nebraska guy. We're going to end up with with Michigan chasing its tail again. Yeah. I, I can't tell you how many times I think this is the dumbest thing in the world to do. You're going to close off. You're going to narrow the gap of possible coaches 
simply because you want somebody who will answer to your bidding, who will do things your quote unquote, your way. No, no, go outside of the family and hire the best person for the job. And who gives a shit where he went to school? Yes. Yes. And so I, I, I've got a buddy of mine that actually brought up one of these subjects that was like, okay, so at what point can we say that success in the AAC doesn't matter? Because look at Scott Frost, look at Fuente, you know, look at whoever, right? There's just it, it, Kevin Sumlin, Tom Herman. You start naming off all these names of guys that were super successful in the American Athletic Conference, and then they get to these other jobs, and it's not like they don't have opportunity at those jobs, but... I do think that in some cases it's just the program. Like I don't think Tom Herman is a bad coach. I don't. I, I don't know that Scott Frost is a bad coach. I, it kind of. But seems hang on like now. So so let's let's stop and, and let me let me ask you this. So Tom Herman leaves Houston and he goes there. Does if he takes the LSU job, is he successful? Or is he not? Is it Texas that's the problem, or what, is it the AAC guys that are the problem? So I brought because up because you're you're bringing at, up unique situations where yes. these coaches go to places. And it would be different if every coach before them was succeeding. They keep landing jobs where every person before them is a failure. Now, obviously, not 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 Fuente, not, not Fuente because he went to a place where, but they haven't changed coaches over in yeah. thirty five years before he got there. So here's here's what I said. I said, well, you could honestly just say that about any modern super successful G five coach. That's like right. it's not just the AAC. It's we have not seen a lot of. G five coaches other than Chris Ur- Peterson, Urban Urban Meyer and Chris Peterson are the are the two, right? Yeah, that's and, and Ur- we're not talking Urban about built like Bowling legacy. Green, Urban built Utah, and then Urban was successful everywhere he's been. Chris Peterson, same thing. Yeah, so I, I'm not saying that that nobody has been successful. Period. I'm just saying we haven't seen it a lot, and a lot of it has to do with these jobs that they're going to and yes, the it. inner workings there, right? So I think I think the job they're picking has a bigger issue to do with the success than, than the, than it's not a chicken and egg thing. Yeah. I don't think that because they were a successful coach at the American, that doesn't mean they can't succeed at the next level. I think the jobs that they're getting are not good jobs and it doesn't matter who you put there, you know, unless it's you're be an urban or a Saban type, I just don't see a lot of people going into these places and succeeding. And if those two came into Texas or a place like that to succeed, they would not succeed the way Texas wants to. They would not succeed the way Nebraska wants to. They would tell all those folks, leave the checkbook, get the hell out. This is my athletic department. Yeah, yeah. I There's so many things at work with these different places because I do think in a lot of these situations, they just have a significantly better talent advantage at the AAC school than they do at these P5 schools. Like At, at, at UCF, the talent advantage is massive over these right. other schools. At Nebraska, they, there really is no Hang on big now. talent but, advantage. But, but that, that, that gap has shortened a lot. The talent This year, the talent gap at UCF ain't close to what it used to be because Cincinnati is just as good as him. Tulsa is going to be really good. Houston is still going to be really good. Memphis Agreed. is going to be okay. Like, like they're not going to have the massive talent gap that they used to have. Agreed. So, I'm yes, saying Scott that, Frost. I'm, Scott Frost got it. Got it and got that ability. Yeah, when I, Frost was there. I don't. I don't know that Heupel had that. Okay? No, because Heupel. Tom didn't Herman. Recruit. Tom Herman absolutely was there in the early days, but now, you know, Fuente was there, and and yes, he had talent. Nobody else did. But Mike Norvell had to deal with everybody being pretty good. Yes. Yes. So I wonder Absolutely. if the new batch of coaches that come out of the American are going to be more ready for these jobs and more prepared because the competition of the entire conference. I, hell, SM, didn't even bring up SMU. So True. you know that the American has gotten significantly better over over the course of time. I don't know, man. I just think some of these places are bad. I I, I don't look at Nebraska as a job that. I'm going to tell you this, Nebraska's not Kansas, but Nebraska definitely has to figure out, do they want to bring in one of these uh, academy guys, somebody yeah, to, to yeah. run a gimmick offense? Well, no, you, just you don't even need the gimmick. Close. You don't need the gimmick. What you need is somebody that understands what the identity of a Midwestern football team should be there or a go. team that's in that's the Big it. Ten West, which is that's exactly it. why we were talking about Bielema being perfect for the job in the first place. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. you got to have somebody that is going to buff up the – Offensive line. The offensive line and defensive line, for that and matter. Because you, you have to win in the trenches if you want to play Big Ten football. Yes. I, look, Illinois 
kind of whipped them a little bit. Like yes, it, I mean it was just it, it, so here here look at looking at advanced stats and whatnot. I like this new site called GameOnPaper.com. Yep. And so passing EPA, Illinois was one point zero three EPA per pass yesterday, which is not good. Nebraska was negative five point five passing the ball. Like that's insane. They're bad rushing the ball. Illinois negative two point five two. That's not good. Nope. Nebraska nine point seven five EPA running the football. They were able to run the ball with Martinez, and they kept trying to get him to pass. I'm telling you, the late game antics. Like this was a team that was just out coached by Bielema and and the Illini. Like period. Yeah. They were out. They looked so lost, so confused, and honestly, Scott Frost at the end of the game. When he was doing his post game press conference and all that, and he said, "It's the same movie. Like it, it looks like the same way that we've lost every time." And it's like, "Yeah, that's because you are not coaching these guys correctly." So yeah, for you're some not doing, reason, you, you've got to figure. If you watch the same movie enough, you should be smart enough to figure out what to do different. Like I, at, after after all these years of Martinez, I think we know what he is. But the problem is, is they don't have anybody else. Therein lies the issue. They've let all, all these other guys go. Are they not recruiting anyone else? Why, if you're a young recruit, why are you not going to Nebraska saying, I know I can take that guy's job. I know I can start here. Nobody you know, wants to come play football for you. 247 Sports has their college team talent composite rating out right now. And Nebraska, and so it just came out yesterday. Like they always do it the first day of the season, right? It came out yesterday, and this is for this year's team, right? This is for this year's team, right? Yeah. Nebraska is twenty eighth. They are right, right above Mississippi State, right above Utah, right above uh, TCU, who's thirty first. I and think then, Mississippi State would beat this team by thirty. Which, by the way, Wisconsin is number thirty four as far as team talent goes. Like, yeah, it, it's Wisconsin's not. It's going to be a fifteen point favorite against them. Yes, Nebraska has twenty four stars on their team out of seventy seven commits. Right, but they can't get a quarterback, Gary. It's yes, it's not, but it's not even that. Like the guys that they had running the football, they, no. it, it was aside from Adrian Martinez, right? Yes, the guys running the football couldn't do anything. Nope. Like that offensive line could well, not block. And you're talking about stars on the field. You're talking about guys who are supposed to have talent. These receivers could not get separation. I I watched this game, and and I'm I'm looking at guys covered everywhere. I'm looking at Martinez getting pressure sacks. Not because they're rushing him so well. It, it's, beca- it's because nobody is open. Yes. And I'm thinking, where did these DBs come from for Illinois? They all have to be transfers because see, they, couldn't the cover, they couldn't cover anybody last year. I don't think they're that good. I don't. I don't, I don't either. think they're that good. So you're telling me the stars on the name of the back. So is this, is this those guys really weren't four stars when they went to Nebraska and somehow the whole grading system for college football is bad or is Nebraska, are they regressing at this school? Are they getting worse? Uh, I think it's somewhat similar to the Texas situation under Tom Herman, right? Like they have a bunch of highly ranked recruits that go there and then never develop and they never become what they're supposed to be. And that's on the that's coaches. That's so weird. That's so, it's just the strangest thing in the world for me to understand. I can't understand that. I don't it's, know how to wrap weird. my head around that. It's weird to look at it and say, okay, like what was the, what happened? What happened with yes. these guys, with basically everybody? Um, because Scott Frost, nobody, when he left UCF, said that he was going to be a disastrous hire. Everybody no. was curious, like, will it work? And and a lot of people were, he's going to have Nebraska win a national championship. That's this right. And that. Maybe it's karma from claiming a 2017 national championship. I don't know. No. <laughs> no, it's he, not had, that. He, had, he had nothing to do no, with that. It no, it didn't. But I do wonder about it because he he looked so innovative, so good. But I do wonder if there's something about going into that division because it, it kind of seems like once you get there, you're either a lifer or you are knocked the hell out. You know, yeah, yeah, you're right. If you look at the coaches around that the, around that division in football, they're they're either there forever, or it's a revolving door and they can't they can't find their footing. Yeah, I mean, Bielema was there 
and no, Stanford Bielema, Bielema Wetland. left. Now, and Bielema had legitimate reasons for leaving. Yes. Legitimately reasons for leaving. He wanted to go somewhere where every year he didn't have to hire a new OC and a DC every year because they were just getting paid more. They weren't getting promotions. They were they were just going from making ninety five thousand dollars to four hundred thousand dollars. Yes. And that's that's, that's, all, all, that's all he wanted was to get his get his assistants to not leave him for a better job that just paid more. Yeah, um, because Wisconsin, Wisconsin would not pay assistant coaches yeah, back then. They just they just no. didn't do it back then. But anyway, I think if Brett had his way now, he would have never left. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah, the only people that seem to leave for other jobs, and they are not as good jobs, are no. the guys that, that are typically at Wisconsin, right? Other than that, right. like, and we haven't seen anybody leave Nebraska for a better job. We haven't seen anybody leave, which Ferentz has been at Iowa forever. You know, you <laughs> just look at the entire division, and nobody's leaving, and if they are, it's because they're getting fired. So and it is interesting. That is just the one division in football that has just refused to adapt and change. So the rest of the rest of college football has said defense has gone a little bit of the way of the dodo. And if you're not putting your best players on offense, then we're not we're not functioning correctly. Yeah. All right. And the Big Ten West has just said no, no. We're going to build in the lines on both sides. We're still going to play football the way it was played in the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s. And if you can throw a little bit, then you're going to be way more innovative than everybody else. But if you want to run a, a, a run and shoot massive spread offense, you come into this division, you might be really good outside of the division. But in the division, we're going to beat the hell out of you. Hey, look at Purdue. That's I mean, it. It, Jeff Brom, uh, he had yeah. one season where he was uber successful. And, Major and by magic. Uber, that was yeah. like what they they won a bowl game. They were like seven and six or, or whatever it was. I don't even know if they won the bowl, game. but they beat Ohio State that year. That's right. right. They, they just beat, beat the brakes off of them. And everything about it. And everybody assumed Brom has figured this out. He's coming nope. in. He's changing it up. And what a, every year since they have gotten blasted by and, everybody that plays bully ball football in the West. Yes, and it will. So continue congratulations. On. You might be able to put a bunch of points up when you don't play us four teams. But when you play Wisconsin, when you play Iowa, when you play Northwestern, you're you're going to get beat up. Yes. We're gonna play we're gonna play us three are gonna play a certain way. And if you want to play different than us, good luck with that. Uh biggest play in this game with Nebraska and Illinois was Adrian Martinez being sacked by Randolph. And then it was uh, recovered by Calvin Hart. Right. I was about to say the sack, yeah, like, the sack fumble. That was because that that was immediately after a Nebraska forced fumble, where okay, they got a shot with like fifty something seconds left to be able to get down the field. It was nine nine at the time. I know we spent a ton of time on this game. This is about the only game worth spending time on. Yeah. I have a question. What do you think of safety? How like at what point in time? I've seen coaches, I've seen players from well coached football teams make big mistakes. Okay, I've seen it happen. Bill Belichick has had punt returners make huge kerfuffles. All right, yeah, and nobody has been more coached up or prepared for a game than a Bill Belichick coach team. I've seen it happen. It happens at Alabama. It happens. It happens everywhere. When this kid did this, my first thought was, "Is well, that makes total sense." As he's never been taught how to how to play football. That's like, a, yeah, I was nobody about to say. has taught him. And I think, all right, am I too knee-jerk reaction, or do we just see all of the mistakes and the sloppiness of this team and just assume nobody's teaching these guys very basic fundamentals of their team? Put your yep. heels on the 10-yard line. If the ball goes over your head, block somebody and hope it goes in the end zone. This is not a hard concept to grasp. It's you and I have had this. To learn. Yeah, we've had this discussion on this show, I want to say every year. You know how every I am. Every year. Like I'm, I am old man football guy. Yeah. Fundamentals. It put your heels on the ten yard line, like you said. Let the ball go and over your head. It block. 